Hi, and welcome to Focal Point AFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name. The program is uh, Focal Point. This is high-definition radio, more content per square inch of air, per cubic inch of air than any other place on your radio dial. Glad to have you. That's our goal. Not saying we achieve it, but that's what we are aiming for. Now, you heard um, President Obama talk about the fact, he said, oh, yeah, we, we, we shoot skeet all the time. I'm one of those bitter clingers. I go to my cabin in the woods in the weekends, and, man, I just blow the heads off them little clay pigeons. And, of course, they don't have heads and stuff. I'm just uh, kind of saying that. Uh, but it turns out the Washington Post looked into this. He says, we, we do skeet shooting all the time. And the Washington Post dug into this, and what they discovered is that the most, at the very most, He shot skeet a couple of times. This is according to a source who's been to the retreat on a half a dozen visits. The only time he shot skeet was for the President's Cup, referring to a shooting competition involving the Presidential Marine Guards. I was there. He stayed for about five minutes. He couldn't leave fast enough. So he was terribly uncomfortable and pulled out just as quick as he could. So even the Washington Post kind of exposing him for exaggerating uh, about uh, being a bitter a clinger. Uh, uh, Washington, uh, Arizona, the Arizona Senate panel has passed a bill barring the enforcement of federal gun measures, saying, look, they're going to be null and void in the state of Arizona. This is just a Senate panel, so it's still got to go to the Arizona Senate, but it would bar enforcement of any new federal gun laws, and it would make it a uh, felony uh, for anybody to try to enforce a federal gun law. The Wyoming House has approved a bill that exempts its state from federal gun control measures and makes it a misdemeanor for anybody there to try to enforce a gun control measure. Now, Senator uh, Jeff Sessions had a hearing yesterday uh, on, on the issue of gun control. Senator, Senator Jeff Sessions had a good question for a sheriff that was there to represent the gun control, the people control position, and here's how the exchange went. Senator Sessions said, look, if you guys are, if this administration so concerned about gun control, we've got to clamp down on this gun violence, we've got to enforce gun safety, how come they don't prosecute violations of gun laws? Let's hear, here's how the exchange went. Those prosecutions have declined, unfortunately, substantially under President Obama's presidency. Uh, Chief, does it concern you? that in two th- comparing total prosecutions per month for guns in federal court with those for the, per month in 2011, with those for the same period in 2010, the number of filings went down 7.9% and were down 28.8% from 2006 in federal court. Does that concern you? <clears throat> Senator, I can tell you that in the Baltimore County Police Department. I just ask you if those are the numbers. Does that concern you? No, because you don't. It include, doesn't you're, you're not, you? sir. You're not including local prosecutions. I can't stand before you today and tell you of a single case in Baltimore County of an illegal possessed gun that was not prosecuted. Well, at local chief, or state are we level. trying to pass a federal law today or a state law? Certainly, background checks. That's universal. what you're calling for is a federal law. We'd like to see the federal laws that are on the books enforced. I suggest, um, and. With regard to the crimes of, of carrying a firearm during the furtherance of a violent or drug trafficking offense, those prosecutions declined 28.5 percent between 2007 and 2011. So I would just say, first of all, we need to make sure we're doing our job there. So uh, uh, Senator Jeff Sessions is doing a good job. Triple eight five at nine eight eight four zero. The number to call, by the way, triple eight five at nine. 8840. I got a piece here by Patrick Ryan on the American Spectator. Uh, as uh, uh, Senator Sessions was stating, federal weapons prosecutions per capita were down 35% in 2011 from their peak in the Bush administration. Of the 76,000 federal background denials in 2010, the ATF referred only 62 to federal prosecutors. That's what Jeff Sessions was talking about. But of those 62, prosecutors declined 18 of them. So they didn't even prosecute, but 44 of them. And only 13 of those resulted in a guilty plea by the uh, defendant. So they charged 22 people for submitting falsified information. 
along with 11 convicted felons for possessing firearms and seven domestic offenders uh, for their offenses. And I've got a soundbite. If we, uh, if I can find that, it's a Joe Biden clip. I don't know if I still have that one, Rob, or not, where he said, look, we, we, we don't have time to enforce the laws that we have. It looks like that's not on the list anymore. Might have taken it out. But Joe Biden said, look, we can't, uh, we can't even enforce the gun laws that we've got in place. He's admitting they don't have the manpower to do it. So now they want to just keep adding more gun laws to the ones that are already not even enforcing. Good question from Jeff Sessions. Now, Jay Carney was asked the same question. And again, this is, this is Jonathan Carl, ABC, clip six. This is ABC. This is a mainstream media. Even they're onto this, something looking fishy about this administration wanting more gun control laws when they're not even enforcing the ones that they have. And they kind of badger uh, Jay Carney on this issue. Let's listen. There have been 72,000 cases where, uh, in 2010, just a single year, 72,000 people were denied uh, gun purchases based on background checks. So in other words, 72,000 people illegally tried to buy a gun in 2010 but only 62 of those cases were referred for prosecution. Why are so few of the current gun laws being prosecuted? Well, I think part of the overall approach here needs to be uh, you know, enforcement of the laws that we have, and that includes you know, making a background check system that is uh, not complete, uh, that has enormous loopholes like the capacity for somebody uh, not to submit to a background check if they go to a gun show or buy from a private seller. So uh, the, the identifying a problem uh, does not refute that there, is, there are other problems. And 72,000 72, people who tried to buy a gun illegally, 72,000 and only 62 were, were prosecuted. So John Carl, not going to let him get away with that. Look, 72,000 violations, 62 prosecutions, and as we saw, only 44 of those were even charged. So you got 44 prosecutions out of 72,000 offenses. And yet you want to pile on more gun control laws on the ones you're not even enforcing to start with. Uh, let's grab clip number uh, eight. This is Christy Hefner. She's now with the Center for American Progress. She's uh, Hugh Hefner's daughter, used to be the CEO of the Playboy Enterprise. She's now at the Center for American Progress. And listen to what she blames for gun violence. Listen to this. Now, there are contributing factors that are not under anybody's control and may, may seem odd, but it is factually true. One of them is actually the weather. There is a dramatic increase in gun violence when it is warmer, and we are having this climate change effect that is driving that. <laughs> so, so global warming. Global warming is driving all of this out-of-control gun violence. You know, they had 40-plus murders in Chicago. This is the last day of January. We've already had 40-plus murders. They're on pace to hit their 550 mark from last year. Are you aware of any kind of heat wave that I haven't been read about in, in Chicago in January? Some kind of blast of, of solar heat that is uh, sweeping through the city of Chicago and prompting all of this when neither have I. Uh, so, again, a wizard of smart out there blaming the murder rate uh, not on... Anything, but, well, not primarily on uh, global warming. Let's go to the phones. Let's go to Wendy in Lakeland, Florida. Wendy, you're on Focal Point with Brian Fisher. What's on your mind? Hi, Brian. I just really want to thank you, first of all, for all the information that you get out to us. You're welcome. Um, and I just want to make a comment of what is the government doing? You know, we we got all these laws and, and things that, they're supposed to be enforcing, but they're not doing any of it. What are they doing? All these members of the Senate, the Congress, the, you know, the higher ups, especially the Border Patrol. You're, you're right about they're coming over here to get free stuff. You know, American citizens can't get all that. You, you go and see how much help you can get. But if you're an illegal immigrant and you go to the any government agency, you can get welfare, you can get help, a cell phone, rent money, groceries. I mean, it, the list is long. What are they doing about any of that? And they're coming over here in droves still. You know, the, the Border Patrol is not getting enforced. I just watched a, a piece on 60 Minutes where a rancher, he watches all day long the people that just single file come over across the border and nobody's watching. 
You know, and it's amazing, Wendy. I mean, we, we talked about this uh, a couple years ago, but you know, there's even a corridor through the state of Arizona, and exactly. they've got it. They, they've got it. They've got it marked. This is in Arizona. Don't go here. This is where illegal aliens come across. This is where drug traffic is. So they know where these people are. They, they know exactly they, where they're coming they, in at. They know right where they're coming, and they don't do it. anything. What they do, instead of stopping them, they put a sign up telling Americans to stay away from this particular piece of sovereign U.S. soil. It's just crazy. Well, listen, Wendy, I appreciate the call. You know, Heritage Foundation did a, a study some time ago, research into this business of, of benefits, and discovered that illegal aliens do contribute to the American economy, about $10,000 worth, but they consume about $32,000 in taxpayer-funded benefits. So they consume three times what they contribute to the American economy. Let's go to Nick in Conroe, Texas. Nick, you're on Focal Point with Brian Fisher. What's on your mind? Uh, Brian, thank you for uh, giving me some air time. Um, I'm an I'm, I'm uh, immigrant from the 1997 uh, uh, amnesty, and uh, listen, I uh, understand all what's going on, basically. Uh, I like Republicans because they can do things more responsibly. Uh, and I believe the illegal immigration is the only problem I believe is, 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 uh, is bad is that they're giving away the uh, American citizenship very cheap. I think we have to put more responsibility into the illegal immigrants. They have to police themselves to not to. But what happened? We, you know, we bring more people. We we start bringing a family in illegally, and we all know, you know, how they're coming through. They're not coming through the border like everybody believes. They come coming through a different way. They use now, Nick. L- l- let me interject here because I'm I'm down to about 45 seconds. But I hear you saying that you're Hispanic, you're here as an immigrant, you grant, or were granted legalization in 1987, but you do not believe that we ought to allow unrestricted uh, immigration today, that we should legalize all of these illegals that are now in the country. Is that what I'm hearing from you? Yeah, um, I don't agree. I think we, we're giving the, you're giving the, the, the uh, citizenship too cheap. I mean, it costs a lot to all the American people. Hmm. So I believe we, we have to give the, the, um, the citizenship with more responsibility. You want you want to be American, let's, let's do something about it. Let's, let's see the price you're willing to pay for. All right, Nick, listen, I appreciate that very much. So that's uh, someone who uh, came as a Hispanic immigrant, says we got to emphasize responsibility, says that's the message of the Republican Party. So there's a Hispanic who's more in line with Republican values. Focal Point AFR Talk, back in two.